you. Good. Great. And then up the back. Yeah. Um, what about uh, effects on groups of people? You know, like it could be a number of people in a car crash or in a collective household, the dog craps in the lounge room or something like that, you yep. know. Good. Um, are the causes, like everybody's, like firstly, is that everybody's cause and effect? Or is it, you could say, oh, this is your law of attraction and not mine. Or, uh, um, and are the causes, if, if it is everybody's, then are the causes related? Everybody affected is involved in the cause. And is the so a nation goes to war, everybody affected was a part of creating the cause of that war. And is the cause, uh, is it a common cause between people or can it be completely different causes with the same effect? Uh, it's usually common causes, yeah, of course. But, uh, but, but often the underlying emotion is quite different. So, you know, you and I can have a very similar similar. Uh, event happened to us, but as a re but as a result of a different emotion that creates that event happening. So, for example, we might be in an accident. You injured your left side of your body in the accident. I injured my right side of my body in my accident in the accident because the car came from a certain direction or in the middle or whatever it is. You know, so 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 w we could say that we were both in the accident, but the fact that I injured one part of my body and you injured the other part of your body demonstrates that there was a different cause inside of both of us to that particular accident. Does that make sense? What happened to me physically and emotionally and spiritually is the underlying, is the effect of the underlying cause for me. Yeah? So for example, if a person is raped, the rapist and the, the person who's been raped have two completely different causes going on for that particular event. Does that make sense? They don't, they don't have the same cause. The woman who was raped didn't want to be raped. Right? So she had a completely different cause going on as to why she was raped than the rapist who did want to rape her had going on inside of him. But they are both a part of the creation of the event. We're not talking about whose responsibility for the unloving action. So the rapist has the potential of not choosing to rape. So therefore has a far larger culpability for the unloving action from a compensatory perspective. But the cause is the souls of the people involved. Everybody affected is involved in the cause. Everybody affected. So if something had, like the roof fell in today on all of us, we would all be a part of the cause of that event. Does that make sense? Yeah. And by the way, the council would also be a part of the cause of the event because it affects them. Financially, it affects them, so they would also be a part of the cause of the event. Does that make sense? Everybody affected is involved in the cause. So, like, if in that situation, might all of our emotions be completely different that, that have caused us to be involved in that? Yes, they will be different because it will affect us in different ways. And how it affects us determines what the cause is. But, but obviously we are affected by being involved, so there is some effect created by our cause. So, so for example, something happens on the other side of the world and you turn on the telly right at the moment and that's the first thing you see. You are involved in the cause of that event. Does that make sense? Because it just affected you. It just affected you. So you are involved in the cause. There's something inside of you that added to the event to actually cause it. Can I just... <laughs> that needs to settle with you. Because you, start, you see, you start understanding. This is where it's very important to understand this law. Because if you start understanding how everything in your life 
is actually a part that is a part of your life, is involved because of the cause that happened in your own soul, that there's something in your own soul creating it, you start to actually, for the first time in your life, have the power to change things. You see, the majority of us are addicted to changing effects. And the problem with being addicted to changing effects is that we are reducing the power of our own soul. Because our own soul is the most powerful when we address the cause rather than the effect. And most of us are purposefully reducing the power of our own soul by continuing to attempt to address the effects. And if we had instead focused on the cause, we would be increasing the power of our own soul. And quite often exponentially so, because once you address the cause, now a whole series of potential future events or effects that could have happened now no longer will happen. So you not only solve this particular event, but you now solve or have the solution to every single event that is caused by the same thing. Can you see like the power of that? And this power occurs positively and negatively. So we've been talking a lot about the negative effects of different causes, but there is positive effects of different causes too. For example, if you exercise a passionate desire in harmony with love, the law of cause and effect will demonstrate to you that actually you will always get the things that you desire. Because it's a natural consequence of the law of cause and effect. You see? And this is why I've been emphasising to many of you, follow your desires, find your desires, embrace them, really follow them, don't be afraid of them, don't be shying away from them, don't be trying to um, ask other people what they are or any of those kind of things. You need to embrace that because there's a positive side to every single law. You, know, you have to remember that all of God's laws are loving. Every one of them. So that means the law of cause and effect is loving. And everything can be embraced in a loving manner and have a positive outcome as a result. Because it's loving. So the law of cause and effect, when understood and actually embraced in a loving manner, what it will do is it will have everybody affected is involved in the cause that was positive, not negative. Do you follow that? Yeah. So all of these laws are f f like one of, one of the biggest things in my life in 2,000 years has been investigating laws of God. If you ask the Apostle John what he's passionate about, he's passionate about different things than I am. And, uh, and my passion has always been this focusing on how God's laws work. Because God's laws are like a framework that everything else exists within. Do you know what I mean by that? It's like a framework. You, you imagine, um, the perhaps how can I illustrate this? Because it, this is a universal un uh, thing to understand that all of God's laws are what enable all other potentials and possibilities. So all of God's laws can exist without the possibilities. Um, the entire universe came into existence and is structured in its current form by laws that were created before the universe came into existence. The law existed before the physical thing came to be. Every single law that governs your soul came into existence before you, your soul, or anybody's soul for that matter, was created. Every single law was present. Now that's pretty fascinating that these laws exist without 
the physical matter or the spiritual matter existing. And if you can understand that every one of God's laws is loving and was in existence before anything physically or spiritually in terms of matter was ever created, then you begin understanding the, the power of actually engaging those laws at your soul level. You see, see what most of us are doing, excuse me, I'll just... What most of us are doing is we are avoiding God's laws or trying to work around them constantly. And in the process of doing that, we are actually working against laws. Now let me illustrate to you how that looks. So if this is a brick wall, you imagine that's a brick wall, this is how it looks. <laughs> that's how it looks. Huh? That's what we're doing in our life. Now what do you end up with? Minimum, a headache. <laughs> Maximum, your whole skull cracked apart. Death, in other words, is what you end up with doing that. And the majority of us are continuing to see God's laws as trauma and, and something to rebel against and something to avoid and something to work around. You cannot work around any of God's laws now on earth we get used to working around men's laws don't we do you find that yeah. speed limit 100 totally open road no one is on the highway 130 150 170 yeah this is feel comfortable because we are so used to wanting to get our own way wanting to break the law now, from God's perspective, we often just constantly butting our heads against the brick wall of God's laws because God's laws are unchangeable. You cannot adjust them in any way and they affect all of us in the same manner. I am totally under the same control of the same laws and the same manner as you are. There is no difference. There is, all of God's laws are completely loving and completely perfect but also completely just and completely in harmony with equality all of them we all live by them so then we've got to ask ourselves why does a different thing happen to me than happens to you because of our soul what's going on in our soul 